This is the Schwinn Meridian three-wheeled bicycle. I purchased this for my parents. Uh, my mom's around 75 and my dad's around 82. And I wanted to get it for them so they could get some exercise. My concern was uh, whether or not they'd be able to ride it and um, how difficult it was to put the bike together. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how I was able to put the bike together. It is very easy to put together and whether or not my parents were able to ride it, which they were. You can see right here, we're on sort of a slagged driveway. It's relatively uh, flat, but still I didn't know if they were gonna be able to have uh, enough strength in their legs to pedal the bike. And um, I can tell you that it, they did. There was no problem at all for them to do that. Oh, they're pretty slow, but uh, it works just fine for them. Uh, as far as putting the bike together, I did about a week's worth of uh, research to find out what three-wheeled bicycle I thought would be best for them. And uh, in the process of doing that, I found a lot of people having problems put together, maybe not necessarily the Schwinn, but in general putting together three-wheeled bicycles, even taking them to bicycle shops and paying up to $100 to have a, the bicycle put together. Um, you shouldn't have to do that. You can put this together by yourself. And I think Schwinn is really dropping the ball here by not having a step-by-step -step video on YouTube that shows the people who buy these bicycles how to put them together. Uh, that's something that I do. I'm a video production uh, business, and uh, that's the type of video, one of the types of videos I'd make. And the cost to put make one of those videos is less than what it would cost for the actual bike. So why Schwinn doesn't have a video out there showing you step-by-steps on putting this bike together, I don't know. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to do something free for Schwinn, but I do want to give you the tips on putting this bike together in case someone's interested in buying the, the bike. Uh, I think you're really missing out if you don't get this bike. Um, to begin with, uh, you're going to need somebody to help you. You, you really are. I, I put it together by myself, but uh, it was a little difficult. Um, when you get the bike out of the box, uh, you want to uh, go ahead and open everything up and see all the parts that you have. There is the back axle assembly that will slide onto the back frame of the bicycle. And there's um, two bolts on each side with the nuts that you have to loosen them up. And, and it's a little tricky getting it on, but uh, I was able to do that by myself. And then you just want to hand tighten it because you're going to have to adjust that later on. Once you get that back frame on, then what you'll want to do is take, I took the drive wheel. It doesn't really matter. The drive wheel is on the right hand side. You'll notice the difference. Uh, so I put the drive wheel on and just loop tightened the uh, nut with my hand. And the reason you do that one is because when you go over here, you can hold the right wheel and it will keep the shaft from moving when you tighten the uh, nut on the coaster side. Now, the right hand side is the side that drives. The left hand side is the coasting side. One of the things and one of the tips I want to give you is that you, uh, you don't want to stand up and ride this bike because if you hit a slick spot or if you get some more pressure on this right pedal here, what will happen is you'll be pushing your, your weight on this left pedal, lifting this bike up just a little bit, and you'll spin the right tire. And you have to watch yourself. If you're on a slant or something, you might slip and fall and might tip the, the bike over. As far as tools are concerned, you will need metric tools. Um, you can get away with using crescent wrenches instead of metric wrenches, but you will need to use a metric Allen wrench for the gooseneck and a metric Allen wrench for the gooseneck to tighten the handlebars on too. So once you get your rear axle assembly put on and you get the two wheels put on, the next wheel you want to put on is the front wheel. To do that, you're going to need to push the top of the brake here together and what that will do is let you disconnect the brake, actually. Once you disconnect the brake, the tire will just slip right up through the brake. And then when it's time to put this back together, you just simply push it together at the top and it slides back in. Now, you may have to do a little bit of adjustments on your brake. And it's right here. There's an Allen bolt, which is metric. And you would loosen that and then either pull the cable or loosen the, let the cable go through to make your brake either tighter or further away. So now that you would have the two back wheels, the back axle, and the front wheel on, I went ahead and put the gooseneck and handlebars on. And uh, again, I kind of just snugged everything up. You'll want to keep these handlebars, if you notice, I have them tilted up in the air. And the reason you're going to want that is when you get on the bicycle, it's not like a normal bicycle where you, you can lean. 
when you want to turn this bicycle, you will have to turn the handlebars quite a bit. And if you don't have them tilted up, you'll be hitting your knees. The other thing is whenever you put your seat on, you want to start at the lowest level because if you have it kind of high, when I first got on it, it was very difficult for me to pedal. Until I lowered the seat, then I found it was a lot easier to pedal the bike. So getting back to putting it back together, or putting it together, once you have all three of the wheels on, the uh, gooseneck and the handlebars, um, part of the concerns that I had seen about putting a three-wheel bicycle together was that you need special tools, you would need a chain breaker. And that was a little concern of mine when I looked at the chain, I didn't see the old-fashioned um, master link. They have a new master link that goes in here and you will put the chain together and snap it and then whenever I looped the chain around the two sprockets, I was a full extra link. And I was concerned that I was going to have to go back to the store and get a, a chain breaker to, chain, to break the chain. Well, that's not the case because what you do then is once you put the chain on here, there are slots on the back axles that goes on the frame and you just pull the back axle assembly backwards and that tightens the chain to whatever tightness you want it and then you can just tighten the four bolts down and that will finish the assembly of the back axle. Once you uh, have the back axle assembled and you have your wheels on, uh, the next thing that I did was I put the fenders on, which actually was one of the most difficult things to do. I couldn't take the wheel off, put the fender on and fish the wheel back up through. So I had to put the fender on while the wheel was on the bike. This bracket right here is a little difficult because you have to reach through these spokes and put it on. Now, I didn't try real hard to try and fish this wheel up through this fender. You may be able to, but um, I put the fender on while the wheel was there. Then the same with this fender over here. The front fender, these little uh, chrome rods here that, that tighten onto your forks, those were really a pain in the butt. Uh, and then the fenders, all three of them, they were bent somewhat. You had to move them so you didn't have the uh, tire rubbing the fender. Uh, a couple of the things I didn't like is we ordered the blue bike. And yes, this bike is blue, but it's, it's a lot more gray than blue. It's a, it's a very minor thing, but uh, my mom's favorite color is blue, and this wasn't blue. It's blue-gray. Uh, the other thing is this fender here has a pretty bad ding. And over here on this fender, there's some two really nasty dents. And then there's a couple, there's a scratch here and a, another scratch I found. Uh, for the price and for having it ship site to store, you know what, um, uh, big deal. Uh, I know you're not getting what you paid for, but some people don't even put the fenders on. Who knows if they're going to last. Um, so I think you're going to get more aggravation if you start fighting about the, unless they're really bent, uh, but it's not really that bad. So uh, all in all, it took me, I think, about an hour to put it together by myself. The basket is, uh, uh, let's just say I would not be proud to say that I built this basket. Uh, I, I don't like it at all. I'm probably going to make a little wooden flatbed back here. And the basket, when it's, it, it's pretty much assembled, but it's really really awkward and not made very well and there are pins here that you can pull out and and that's how the basket comes apart now this pin here there was another pin in the opposite corner and why they did that I don't know because all that will let you do is the what it will let you do and I guess that's why they did do it um, it lets you fold the basket down but I didn't want the basket to fold down I wanted the basket to drop like that but again now you see that it it has to be up on these rods here and like I said I'm, I'm not real happy with the basket but um, we'll see about that so all in all I think it's a very well made three-wheel bicycle for the price I, I think it's very good um, my major concern was whether or not it would have uh, the right gearing so you could pedal it and, um, and you can, I have ridden it quite a few times already. And um, the biggest thing is, which I'm gonna take a ride on it here, is that when you get on the bike, you just step through here and kinda get on the seat this way. 
And when you first start riding the bike, you're going to you're going to want to all of a sudden you're going to tip from one side to the other like you're riding a regular bike. Um, that's just it's just weird. Once you get the, the hang of it, uh, you, you should enjoy the bike really well. Just get on the bike and start to pedal. And you'll notice if someone hasn't been on this bike before, they'll start doing something like this or something like this because they're either trying to catch their balance. You have to kind of sit straight up and just let the bike go. Now, when I make this turn, you'll see what I was talking about. The handlebars are hitting my knees and I have them pretty high. And whenever you want to turn, you don't want to lean. You just want to kind of sit upright and turn the bike. And you can see, well, there I just spun the tire, but all in all, it, it's a pretty sturdy bike. Coast it and pull the brakes to stop. Um, hope maybe this helped you out uh, with some tips. If uh, you have any questions, uh, be free, uh, feel free to email me if I can help you out at all. Uh, again, I, it's a very well-made bike. Um, for the money, I think it's worth it. You should be able to put it together by yourself without any problem. Maybe someone help you. But uh, it's not that bad at all to put it together. So if you get one of these, I hope you enjoy it.